Welcome back. Uh, time to look at the front pages of the daily newspapers this morning. We'll look at the headlines, of course, with analysis. We have Chris Kendi Wando, uh, weekly commentator on the newspaper headlines. Uh, he's a chartered mediator and conciliator. Uh, Chris Wando, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. Yes, I asked you if you were a prophet of doom, but you said a prophet of uh, reality. Because I remember last week when you were here, you predicted that uh, the cues that you were experiencing in Abuja will be popping up uh, in Lagos in a moment from then. And the uh, uh, cues are all yes. around Lagos State. Yes, I'm a prophet of doing and a prophet of reality. And I told you last week when we were in this program uh -huh. uh, that uh, definitely in the next few days, if not in the sun, that definitely Lagos is going to face uh, the same reality that is happening in Abuja. And uh, that seems to have come true now. So here we are. All right. Nobody seems to be listening. Nobody seems not to be doing anything about this problem. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that because we have analysis and discussion on this later in the program. But um, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, we have these headlines, a big one there. Petrol marketers increase pump price amid scarcity. The rider to that, a motorist queue for product in Lagos, Adorekiti, Abuja, others. All right. Um, Federal government to liberalize diesel aviation fuel importation says silver. Uh, government elect or governor elect disputes equity vote buying claim. A trend worrisome says UK envoy, envoy rather, and uh, excited Buhari receives Oyebanji. Interesting. Abdul Salami stable in UK says presidency. That's a good news. Uh, 50 Kaduna tra trained captives sick, dying. Uh, negotiator worried. 50 Kaduna train captives sick, dying. Negotiator worried. Uh, this leaves a, a churn in my tummy to read that headline. Headline rather. Attack on churches. Bandits seek 100 million naira ransom. Lawan contested senatorial primary says APC chair inducement. Oyetola seeks probe of a delicate. Uh, this are some of the stories on the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper. Uh, voter registration, court restrained Zainek, and kidnap suspect held in AKT. Trying times. Over to the leadership with these headlines. A big one there. Uh, the kicker says 85, 85 days after Kaduna train attack, um, 50 remaining hostages threatened by snakes, scorpions, nine feared dead. Lord have mercy. Uh, the writers to that headline, we're working on rescuing them, FG. Uh, victims' families lament neglect, warn against the train resumption. Attackers of Kaduna churches demand 100 million naira ransom, cut off male victims' ear. District head kidnapped in Plateau. Worse energy crisis looms over global supply shortfall. Queues return as Ipman shuts stations. Abdul Salami hospitalized in London, discharged. Court stops INEC from closing voter registration. Ekiti governor elect denies involvement in vote buying. These are headlines on the front page of uh, the leadership. The Daily Independent has the following headlines private sector growth sluggish as energy cost impacts coys. Uh, companies, it says, uh, diesel price may hit 1,000 naira per liter in days, uh, manufacturers. Court restraints INEC from ending voter registration in June 30, $13 billion Trans-Sahara gas pipeline opportunity to tap into European markets, minister. Fuel queues spread to Lagos, Abe Okuta, Ibado. INEC disagrees with the Kiti governor-elect over vote, vote buying. Privatization of power sector, a complete failure, NLC, says Nigerians paying heavily for megawatts of darkness. Abdul Salami Abubakar out of London Hospital. That's uh, good to hear. Revenue generation falters as debt service increases by 109%. Oh <laughs> my. Um, and 17,647 drug offender offenders, 10 barons arrested, uh, 2,369 jailed in seven months. And finally, I'll be able to make you through the paper headlines um, without fainting. Uh, these are the ones on the front page of the punch. Presidential poll, interim 
running mates risky ex INEC chief wants APC LP placeholder parties invention it has no place in the Constitution says Sans and INEC nobody gave me any condition but I'll step down for new running mate Masari and it says presidential candidates may lose tickets over unqualified deputies state lawyers hmm. Manufacturers reduce investment by 61%. Borrowing costs hits 22%. Under Buhari, over 3,478 killed, 2,256 abducted in seven months. This is according to reports. We're tired of condolence messages, BFN. Uh, analysts call for state police job creation. Court stops INEC from ending voter registration in June 30. Nigerian Airlines, others lose $700 million from 2022. Nigeria rally support for $13 billion Trans-Saharan gas pipeline. Scarcity hits Lagos, Abuja. Fuel sells for 180 naira per liter as NNPC cuts supplies. Bus driver kills and dumps colleagues' corpse at Lagos Park. Shooting police silent as traumatized woman slams burner boy club sexual misconduct oau uni abuja dismissed four professors 14 others terrorists demand 100 million naira ransom for abducted kaduna worshippers osinachi's mother in court seeks justice for daughter and federal commission guards uh, brutalized blind job seekers several hospitalized uh, Chris Kane, one who have never had a day like today on national, international television where I'm panting to, to conclude or finish a look at the headlines. It's been stressful for me reading these headlines. I'll come back to you, uh, Chris. What are your thoughts on the nature of the stories we've seen today and what it says about the state of Nigeria? It's been really stressful, uh, grueling for me to go through all these. I I'm really feeling my, my tummy turn. Over to you, Chris Kane, one. Well, it may be traumatic for you, um, to me. For me, it's not, uh, because um, this is where we find ourselves, and this is how we, uh, things are, since we have been coming out in this country, and it's getting worse and worse by the day. Um, this is very predictable. It's not like something just fell on our laps. We've seen this coming over the months. So many um, Nigerians, uh, Journalists, analysts, um, name them, have predicted this, and we've said that it can only get worse. The only people that seem to not understand what is going on is the, the government, uh, especially the federal government. And the daily basis, they continue to tell us that things are better, things are getting better. We are far better than now that we were in 2015. The security is, uh, uh, they are in control of security. And that um, at a point they even told us that this was just the last key of a dying horse or camel or whatever they call it. But they, faced, they, they refused to face reality. Now they're already campaigning again for 2023 and asking us to come out for them with all the palaces and um, whatever congestion they can put together to make us vote for them. So um, I, what someone like me have developed a kind of shock as well, but nothing. Uh, surprises me as far as, far as Nigeria is concerned again. I say this most often and uh, often and often that to me, Nigeria is just like the that program, Charlie Boy Show, uh, that used to run on NTA and major TV stations in those days. On Charlie Boy Show, anything can happen. And Nigeria, don't be surprised that uh, they say in my place that in Igbo land, they say Chibwa and no, every other morning is a new story. This is what is happening in the state of Nigeria. And we, seem not to, um, we don't seem to have a savior. We don't seem to have anybody that can be able to rescue us from the generation that will find themselves. When the Israelites find themselves in, in, in serious of cry out to God, and God came to their rescue and led them out of Egypt until they got to Canaan. But it's God even listening to us. The Muslims are praying, the Christians are praying, even the traditional uh, watching parts are doing their things are praying to. But personally, it just seems as if, my own personal opinion, it's just like God seems to have turned his ears and eyes to us and asked us to be able to start our problem. 
people that get things done don't just wait on God. Japanese don't, they don't wait on God. Chinese don't wait on God. Americans, yes, they believe in God, but they do the right thing. They do the right thing. The Europeans do the right thing. They don't just wait. Even in Rome, Vatican, we are Christian. You simply say the headquarters of Christianity. They tend to get things right. They tend to do things right. They don't wait on God. In Saudi Arabia, one of the developed countries in the world, um, that is the headquarters of uh, Islam, you can see how things work and how accurate and how beautiful everything seems. I don't know what has been our problem. I've always asked the question, the problem of Nigeria, is it that of leadership or that of followership? Until we're able to answer that question, we will continue to find ourselves where we are. It's rather unfortunate, but that is the reality. I mean, it's, it's the federal government, and in this case, the president, on whose shoulder a lot of these things rest. Is, is he, do you think he's, 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 he's aware of the situation? For instance, talk about Fios Kesti. He started on the streets of Abuja, his, his backyard. Um, you know, we have an insecurity and, and the likes. Um, it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong in the country. Look at the pictures coming out of Asurok Villa with uh, Oyebanji and um, uh, uh, the, the current Akili State uh, Governor, uh, Bissin, the President. Of course, we have photo ops. Um, uh, when Tinubu went there, there were photo ops and everybody's smiling. Someone put up something on, on, in, on Twitter so the other day saying, you know, sometimes even when uh, he doesn't know why, even when things are so bad in the country, at different times, or there are times of tragedy, when you see pictures coming from the presidential villa, and the politicians are together, they're always smiling and clasping hands. You know, is it that they're unaware of the situation in the country, or there's something uh, they know that we don't know? Um, do you think that the, the federal government, the president in particular, uh, uh, Buhari is, um, is, is aware of what's happening, or is, is, is even, you know, worried or interested in, in, in making things better? Because we're seeing smiles and laughs in the pictures coming from the, the presidential villa. It would be, uh, um, how will I put it? It would be very, very funny to say that the president is not aware of happenings. He is. Um, let us not deceive ourselves. He's the president of the Republic of Nigeria, Federal Republic of Nigeria. He has advisors, he has ministers, he has all sorts of aides who feed him on a daily basis. I've been several, I've seen several instances where they um, show the picture of the president. And you see he, he, on his table, newspapers lined up, um, dailies lined up uh, on the table. And that means he reads he read most of these papers. Um, you also see in the background, you see television, uh, television um, popping up. That means also that times you make our time to watch TV and the rest of them. So, President is very much aware. What we are lacking is the capacity of leadership. What we are lacking is a man that has foresight. What we are lacking is somebody that has a complete grip of the situation of things on ground. What we are lacking is a leader with vision. What are, we are lacking is a leader with the foresight with the tenacity to be able to handle and sit down and look at the problem as, uh, as it were and be able to handle this situation squarely as it should. And this is somebody that Nigerians voted in 2015 with the belief that he would do far better than the person he was replacing. They voted for him as a former general that he would be able to tackle the issue of insecurity, being a former general. But what is happening? You can see the barrage of attacks, kidnapping, killings, onslaughts of Nigerians. And nobody is saying anything. Nobody. The only thing we get to hear from me, once there's an attack and killing, he issues a press release and asks the security, um, uh, those in charge of security to do the right thing. And they don't. Just a few days ago, there was an attack in, in the Catholic Church in Kaduna, where three people were killed and so many were taken away. Now, a hundred million ransom is being asked. There was an attack in a Catholic Church in Norway, where several people were killed. They were just buried just this last weekend. And there have been serious attacks all over. We were talking about the one that happened along a, a, on the train between Kaduna and Abuja. Now, report coming in is that most of, some of them have been beaten by snakes. We have about nine already um, allegedly to have died. And the rest are yet to be rescued. We have so many children across the country, especially in the northern part, that we are kidnapped for years now, and nothing seems to be heard about them. Nobody is even talking about rescuing them. You cannot apply the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Lagos Shagamu or uh, Benin Expressway, the, uh, the Abuja Kaduna Expressway. 
the, the Medjugi Rail Expressway, even all over the country without uh, uh, being abducted, a pre the prelate of a, a church, of Methodist Church, was kidnapped a few weeks ago and he paid a 100 million ransom. What else do I want to say? Do we go to the energy sector, which we have been talking about? There is total collapse of um, power across the country. The last time we had, we have come down to just about 9 megawatts from about 4,000 or 500 to used to have. It has been consistently, consistently um, uh, breaking down. And in the last few months, I can't remember how many times that the national grid has uh, broken down. The government promised giving us power. The government in 2015 promised injecting 10,000 megawatts into the national grid on a yearly basis, but now it will 70,000, but nothing. Then you are talking of, let's talk about the petrol also. Just as when we started, we talked about what happened in Abuja. Last week, I rightly predicted that it's going to get to Lagos and other parts of the country. It's in, already in Lagos, it's in Ibadan, it's in Akure, and so many parts of the country. And the, the tragedy of it all is that the president, President Muhammad Buhari, is the minister of petroleum. He is the Minister of Petroleum. Um, uh, Timmy Piesiva is just the Minister of State. We have a, 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 an MD of NNPC. We have tried to onboard the NNPC to make it more effective. But what are we still seeing? Even right there in the central area, up to Metama, up to uh, Asopuro, where the president uh, office is, uh, um, up to Asoro, where the president uh, office is, you see lineup of cars for days, for weeks now. The president drove from Aso Rock to where he, um, for the, uh, what do we call it, the June 12th um, uh, um, celebration. Don't tell me that he didn't see the queue. I'm sure he must have seen the queue. But I asked you, what has he done about it? They promised to give us new refineries. That was part of the promise they made. Not a single refinery has been built in the past seven years. Even the ones they had had totally collapsed. They put millions of naira into the um, naira maintenance. They are not that refinery. None is pumping that one single liter of. That is the level of corruption within the system. But I, as we are moving to 2023, I pray that we'll be able to get a leader who can really roll up his sleeves and get things done. We cannot continue this way as a country. All right. Um, let's uh, let's uh, move over to the politics. Uh, uh, let's give them some some airtime, <laughs> even though I wouldn't love to give them because they don't deserve it. Uh, but um, this is where we find ourselves. Um, uh, the issue of place. They don't like discussing politics. They don't. They don't deserve it because you look. You look at the the, the, the stories that are affecting the ordinary people. We're going to sit down here and talk about placeholder and no placeholder, which has no bearing on whether things are going to change. You know, tomorrow because I mean it's just politics. Whilst we have real issues that they should solve, and um, it's sad, you know, for to hear that you in Abuja you're saying that uh, the president will probably have passed the. Uh, you know, those queues on his way to the Eagle Square. You know, uh, all those uh, Abuja, uh, those politicians who stormed Abuja for the various uh, presidential primaries would have, you know, seen the queues on their way to uh, to the various places where they had the, the primaries. But um, people are moving on as if uh, there, is no, there is no issue. You know, you wonder when they, they, they finish the elections, what are they coming to rule? You know, and I would have asked you if you see us making it to 2022 without, you know what I mean. But let's not go there uh, for, 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 for reasons best known to you and I. All right, let's look at the, 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 the concept of placeholders. Now, uh, an ex INEC chief is warning, according to the, the Punch newspaper, uh, that the interim running mates is a risky venture. We know that the All Progressives Congress and the Labour Party have all, all gone down that route. Uh, I was arguing on my radio program last weekend, or last week rather, with a caller who was insisting that I was wrong. Because you look at section 33 uh, or clause 33 of the Electoral Act, which has been cited um, by a lot of people commenting on this, it says nothing about running mates. It talks about those who are elected in primaries, and primaries can be rescheduled if the elected people write a letter saying they were drawn from the race. You reschedule the primary. It's what happened for. Uh, in the case of um, Umai, he did it clean, came out on, on hurt. Uh, what was his name? Um, 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 God Salakpabio tried to do it, but Mike again uh, said no, that, did, that could not work. Um, so, so what are your thoughts on this? The lawyers who are saying that the Labour Party and APC may, may, may be treading on, on, on glasses here, making a mistake. Well, the uh, Commissioner for Voters Education 
on INEC, uh, first of all, yesterday, uh, was quoted as saying that uh, there is nothing like uh, 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 what, do they, uh, what do they call it? What, what, what's that place, they call place it? holder. Placeholder. Uh, placeholder uh, within the uh, uh, electoral act uh, as amended and that uh, the possibility of um, some of the political parties uh, replacing their vice presidential candidate is uh, a bit tight. Um, but that is what is it. At best, I know that within the electoral act, there is a, um, there is a room for substitution of candidates. And when you, as you said, you said that it's only for those that are elected. But if those are elected, uh, permitted to be substituted. Definitely those that also select as vice presidential candidates or deputy governors, I believe, should fall within that category. That's my personal opinion. I've not taken time to go through um, that, uh, that electoral act has affected that. But the only thing I want to realize for me personally, even as I posted on my social media handle this morning, not being able to pick their vice presidential candidate at this time goes to show that the unseriousness of the political parties and their presidential candidate because by now you respect that we if you are running for um, um the president uh, or as a presidential candidate of your party you should have known by now who you want to pick as um, your uh, vice presidential candidate it's not sky record it's not something that is uh, impossible it's something that can be done so you would have known since or they, they, it's not today that they just prepare to become presidential candidate of their parties Probably say for someone like P2P, who's just moved from PDP to uh, Labour Party. But for the presidential candidate of APC and so many others, by now they would have known. Yes, you, you, you want to say that there's a lot of consultation have to be uh, done, um, party chiefs have to be consulted, stakeholders have to be con uh, uh, contacted, and there has to be a much, much robust discussion on this. But for me, as far as I'm concerned, if INEC hasn't given that window of opportunity and has talked to his gun that there's no substitution, once you submit it something, they would have come out with um, their vice presidential candidate as of today. So I think they're taking advantage of the electoral act and um, probably they still have some time. Somebody said yesterday that they have up to September or is it August to be able to do that. Let's see how it goes. But uh, the, the cheering news for me is the PDP. PDP seems to be on the ascendancy. Uh, right from when they had their uh, convention to elect their national officers, to how they conducted their primaries, you see that PDP seems to be well prepared for 2023. APC, as usual, is running into stormy waters. Don't forget the problem they had having their convention, whether to re replace the interim uh, national chairman and the executive. That took year, uh, almost months. Um, the wranglings within the party and culminating in the uh, presidential primaries of the party. But good enough, they came out of that and scattered. But it seems that there are so many stones that have remained unturned within the APC and they are trying to do the right thing. But it is now left for INEC, not for us to come out, to be specific and tell us whether they are, they are come out category, categorically to tell Nigeria, whether the, there is anything like place holding or no place holding within the uh, INEC art, uh, electoral art uh, that was passed, if that is not possible, what, then what is the next option for the political parties to do? But as, as you said, discussing politics now doesn't make any of us happy because so much is going on. Nigerians are not happy. If you go to, if these things come like this, you are going to see a lot of protest apathy come 20, uh, 2023. If there's no protest apathy, then there must be, there may be a dramatic change from what we're used to. A situation where people believe that it is just going to be a battle between, between APC and PDP may be wrong. We might have a thought force. You can see people mobilizing and trying to get their PVC. And what I've always said is not just getting your PVC, get your PVC and make sure you vote in 2023. All right. Uh, uh, let's go over to the Daily Independent uh, uh, because it has a very interesting headline. Uh, pays, uh, pays attention to the ongoing revelations about the revenue generation. Uh, in the country, uh, if uh, we remember uh, some time ago, the the um, uh, the World Bank, I believe it is, had uh, said that if care is not taken, um, Nigeria's revenue, though this is International Monetary Fund actually, had warned that the debt servicing might go up 100% of the federal government's revenue by 2026, 100%.
you know, already it's gulping what his position is making from oil and gas or from crude oil sales projected in the budget. And uh, uh, he says by 2026, if care is not taken, it's going to gulp the entire uh, of the nation's uh, uh, um, uh, revenue. We're not talking about paying back the debt. We're simply talking about debt servicing. Uh, this, this headline from the Daily Independent, it goes thus, um, revenue genera generation falters as debt service increases by 109%. Earlier, the debt management office, uh, Chris Kane, the one who had told us that um, uh, debt servicing had doubled and hit 896 billion naira in three months. That's according to the debt management office. Um, <laughs> I mean, this, this, I'm sure, must be another reason to feel, you know, as asphyxiated, if you want to use that word, and suffocated about the situation in the country. Yes, it is. At the point, you know that we, have, we spend practically, um, at the point, it was up to 90 percent, about between 80 and 90 percent uh, that we're using for debt services. And uh, as you rightly mentioned, debt services is not that we are even paying back the loans that we are owing. This is just to service the debt. It's just like you picking up a loan from a bank. The interest on that loan is what you are paying. You are not. You've not paid the the, the sum. You, you are not paying the sum. So and <laughs> Profi, is it okay? You uh, some of us are practically gone dead when it comes to issues like this. Um, there are so much legs on our neck that we're no longer breathing. Some, at times they can put leg on your neck and you breathe. This one, we're not even breathing again. We're practically gone dead. Because if you look at the rates at which this federal government, this current government, had been borrowing, it was as if this borrowing is going out of existence. And most of all raised the eyebrow. And it was the government were telling us, the finance minister and whatever, oh, there's nothing wrong with borrowing. We can borrow. We see, as a country, it's not giving instances of so many. Problems. But the fact is that even those countries that you mentioned are borrowing, what are they using that money to do? Because that is supposed to be invested in certain sectors that can yield back uh, money for you to pay back. Kofi, before the Obasanjo government left, the, he wiped out all the foreign debts of Nigeria, completely zero. So between good luck and between the time of good luck, Jonathan and Buhari, that is when you have this pile up of debt. And it seems unabating. That is one. Secondly, we are not exporting enough. Our only channel of exporting, exporting is the crude, which is close to, uh, accounts for close to about 80 to 90 percent of our foreign generation. But the lack on that also is that. While we're exporting, we are also borrowing, we are also importing petroleum products. So whatever you think you are getting in, in selling um, um, crude oil, you are also expending on buying petroleum products. So that depicts your own foreign exchange. It also depicts your foreign reserve. If we have done the needs by now and we have enough capacity to refine our products, then there will be no need for us to spend so much money in importing petrol, uh, petroleum products, we are even subsidizing those products. So it is a big, big problem. And I've continued to ask, do we really have an economic team? In those days, we used to have very strong economic team under the uh, um, uh, Obasanjo region, where you have uh, uh, Okonjo Iwala, you have OBS, Okwesili, even uh, Air Rufai was also part of that thing. You had those at the DMO, a solid economic team think tank that thinks out of the box. And that was what we were able to do. So we tell you, oh, no, the problem is uh, that uh, uh, um, the crude oil was so, so, so amount during that period, during the Jonathan period, during the Obasanjo period. You cannot, be, you cannot compare that with now. Hello, Kofi, since the commencement of the war in Ukraine, which has been going for months, the prices of crude have risen across board. Over sky, it has skyrocketed. We are making so much in the export of crude oil. Nobody is talking about that. Nobody is saying anything about that. All they will tell you, oh, it was also a month during the good Lord Jonathan. You cannot compare it to the, what we're having now. It's also a amount. What nobody is telling us how much we have been making in the past few months since the war in Ukraine. That is the And who goes are borrowing, goes are sorrowing. If you borrow from me and you cannot 
Let me just give you a classical example. You come and borrow a, like this beautiful suit you are wearing now. You come and borrow it from me. You come and take it from me. And you now we, you take it to a party. And I meet you at the party. And you are dancing anyhow with this clothes. I will want you to feel, please, no let this thing tear. Now the only cloth I get, no let this cloth tear. You will dance with, <laughs> you will dance with caution. That is the problem because we are growing so much. And we just, that is why IMF and the World Bank is detecting our economic, um, uh, what do you call it now, our, our economic policies. And we cannot go away from what If we do, China will not give us money. US will not give us money. World Bank will not give us money. IMF will not give us money. But this country is a country that is so rich and so blessed. We have so much mineral resources that we can explore it pro properly and be able to come out with alternative to fuel and this country. Will. What we lack is la we lack leadership. We lack visionary leaders who can be able to take out of the bus and get us out of the woods. All right. Um, we have, uh, uh, you know, the AHT governor-elect uh, denying the allegation, still stay with the Daily Independent, uh, denying the allegation of vote buying. They actually are disagreeing with INEC uh, over this issue of vote buying. We've had um, accusations coming from the PDP uh, in Nikiti State, coming from the SDP in Nikiti State, and also the APC who won the election also accusing as well and defending and denying. Um, let's look at the headline on the front page of Daily Independent very quickly because we have just two minutes. INEC disagrees with the key to governor elect over vote buying. It says um, the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, on Monday disagreed with Biodo Oyebanji, governor elect in last Saturday's election, uh, that there was vote buying during the polls. However, INEC said it will continue to work with uh, relevant agencies in the country uh, towards ensuring that vote buying and inducement to voters during the elections are reduced. Uh, to the barest minimum. So they are disagreeing uh, with the governor and that there was a vote buying uh, as far as that election was concerned. I mean, I'm sure you saw a, a few clips, or at least one of the videos on social media, Chris Kendall. What, what are your thoughts on this? Because this may be uh, uh, a precursor to what will happen in the general elections next year. The governor elect has just been economical with the truth. Uh, he knows the rights, and he knows that it's, it's, uh, let me not use the word that he's lying. So that not to seem a, a kind of disrespect. But the fact is there. Just as you mentioned, you, you saw on social media people showing how much they collected. But that is from a started from the, the convention of the various political parties. So what's happening now? We are dollars, thousands and dollars we have been exchanged for foods. Those the people now at the grassroots are also trying to say, oh, it is our thought. Give us our own share of, of the money too. Now the, but the system, the electoral system in Nigeria has been so politicized. But I'll tell you for free that what we are just seeing now is just a child play of what is going to play out in 2023. It's only those that have the deep pocket that will decide to win the election. The most qualified set of people will not be able to win because this is becoming a naira based and dollar based election for Nigeria. They're finishing in Kitty. The next move is going to be in Oshu, and the same thing will play out. Then before we go into the general election in 2023. But I ask you, because you ask yourself, is it a function of poverty or just that people don't know what they want to do? I would say it's a combination of, a, a, a combination of two. Poverty, people cannot even fed for themselves. Some people are going to bed without food. So a hungry man is an angry man. A hungry man that has not seen, that has not been able to eat, feed his family. If you see somebody that will give you 5,000 naira, just for him to just give him a vote, he will do it. That is the level of poverty in the country. Until we eradicate poverty, then this is how we're going to be. We saw the, the movement of EFCC here and there trying to arrest people. They can how many people they arrest. The issue is that a lot of enlightenment has to be done. And the people have been told that by buying, selling your vote for 5,000 naira, you have sold your conscience, you have sold your family, you have sold your future generation, and you remain in this perpetual state where you are because you do not give room to elect those that can be able to improve your life. After 5,000, how many with 5,000, how many days will it last? Probably 24 hours. At the end of it, what happens? But you have sold your future. So um, the governor elect knows the truth and um, saying that um, there was no vote by it. Even a, a minister in this government was quoted as saying, that it was not only the ruling party that um, uh, bought, uh, bought um, votes or whatever at the election in Ekiti, that he went across board. And I tend to, I tend to believe him. But that is how we roll.
Nigeria, we held him. Interesting. At least we made it through this uh, episode of Out of the Press. Uh, Chris came over. It's been a very hectic. This is one of the most hectic um, show I've had in months. And it's just so sad that this is where I went. It's not a smiling matter. It's not a laughing matter. Nigerians, we are suffering. We are in. Kofi, you need to go to the airport and see the number of Nigerians that are driving and moving out of this country on a daily basis now. People are ready to move as far as Afghanistan. As bad as the situation is. Some people are even ready to go to Ukraine where you're having war. Some Nigerians are ready to go and risk themselves. Life's there. And it doesn't concern our leaders. They don't care. Our life does not matter. QED. Chris Kennedy Wadu, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. And don't be despair. All will be well. Look, if you don't worry. All <laughs> Indeed. They cannot Indeed. spend their own generation Indeed. and spend ours too. God will intervene on our behalf. Have a wonderful day. You too, you too. It's got, it is well, like we say, in this part of the world. <laughs> Even if the sky is falling on your head, it is well. Uh, well. We'll take a break now, look at what happened today, the 21st of June, uh, in history. When we come back, we drive straight into our first major conversation. Please stay with us.